recent study appears to show a person's blood type might just indicate whether they will develop severe respiratory failure if they get COVID-19. This is the latest information we're learning from health officials as they look into the risk of getting the virus and who is more susceptible of having more severe reactions to it. Dr. Justin Kreuter is a specialist with transfusion medicine at Mayo Clinic. Dr. Kreuter, uh, surface proteins. Now, a lot of us are not real familiar with what they do and how they affect our immune system, but this study with blood types seemed to have a direct link with the surface proteins. So please explain what that link is. Yeah, well, there, there seems to be a, an association. We're not really sure uh, what this means at this point. So by all means, uh, all of us, regardless of what our blood type is, uh, you know, we still need to exercise the wisdom of careful practices to really avoid uh, infection. But what uh, the studies have shown, there's been a couple of studies now with a couple of different populations around the world where there seems to be, uh, when you're looking at people that are infected versus not, there seems to be some uh, greater percentage of people who are infected with the blood that have blood group A and people that are blood group uh, O uh, team seem to have a, a lower uh, risk or seem to have a, be a lower um, risk for infection. Um, now, this is just an association. So when I uh, go for a drive in my car, I, I put my cell phone in my pocket, uh, but certainly putting my cell phone in my pocket doesn't mean that I'm gonna go out for a drive. So it's important for everybody to understand that um, the studies that have been done so far are just saying that there is this association, but we're not sure at this point what that means. Okay, but we do want to say that there were uh, more than a thousand people with COVID-19 studied for this particular research project. And because there were so many people looked at uh, the research that was coming out does give good indication. I say that because I have not had COVID-19 as far as I am aware. I am also blood type A and that is the group in this study that says you are possibly more of a higher risk to have more severe reaction when and if you get COVID-19. So with that said, I took note of this personally because I thought, gosh, what does that mean for my children? So certainly, I mean, people that are blood group A that are at higher risk, but even though there are, there are people in our community, uh, my daughter, uh, one of my daughters is blood group O, she still also needs to be cautious because there were people in this study that were blood group O that also uh, contracted severe COVID as well. And so that's why at this point, uh, this association that's been made, it really points questions that are going to need us to go further and understand, you know, what does this mean? And I think there's potential insights down the road for us to better understand how this virus is uh, interacting with our immune system. And even further down the road uh, might mean that there might be uh, different treatments that are applied uh, based on blood group. But at this point, uh, what it means for how we practice uh, or how, um, what's the wisdom of, uh, of medical practice, there's no guidance as far as what your blood group is and what we should do to treat you or what we should do to uh, be careful in our community. Uh, what are some of the other identifiers in what makes certain groups, like your gender, blood type, as we're talking, more vulnerable to contracting or when they get it, how severely ill they'll become? Well, we don't know what about it is making people uh, more at risk or less at risk. We do know that these blood groups that they're talking about in these studies, these are our ABO uh, blood groups. So a lot of times we talk about there being four different blood groups, uh, people that are blood group A, people who are blood group B, people who are blood group O, and then people who are blood group AB. Those antigens, these, uh, when I say antigens, these, that is talking about a sugar that is on the surface of our cells. So there is a sugar that is for blood group A, there's a sugar for blood group B, and there's a different sugar for blood group O. 
and AB has both of those. And so in some way, these uh, seem to be uh, involved or get interacted with in some way with or during the infection. So as we're talking about the different blood types, a lot of people don't even know what blood type they, they are unless they're a donor um, most of the time. So do people with, a, with blood type A, uh, should they be taking more precautions, are you thinking? It's a great question, and my answer is uh, no. At this point, since it's just talking about risk and not talking about who is protected and who is uh, going to get the virus, because it's just talking about risk, it still remains important for all of us uh, in the community uh, to continue to uh, be wise about uh, wearing masks and practicing social distancing, regardless of what your blood type is. I also know that you oversee the blood donation center there at Mayo Clinic, and uh, how is, is everything going there? Are, is there the need uh, for people to come in and donate? Because I think people have been a little bit more leery if they haven't uh, come in. It might be because they've stayed away because of the virus. A great question. You know, we, this is uh, this period for us because the need for blood donation is is continuous. We we can't manufacture blood products, and we still have uh, sick patients in our hospitals. And unfortunately, car accidents are still happening out in our community. So we're always going to need donors. And I think it's important for everybody to understand that we are also sensitive to social distancing and want to keep our donor population as safe as possible. And that's why. We are encouraging our community to call to make an appointment so that we can space out and schedule donors so that we're not getting people in lines uh, lining up to donate. And so we're spacing out uh, donation appointments, which means it's really important for people to let us know, um, you know, if you can't make your appointment for any reason, by all means, just let us know that you need to cancel so we can reach out to other people in our community that can uh, fill that space. Well, I will be calling and making an appointment. I am not afraid to donate by any means, so I'll give you some blood type A. How about that? <laughs> That's fantastic. Thank you, Betsy. <laughs> Dr. Carter, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. We'll be right back.